All right, so we got to act fast and clean up this one. Why I was wrong in the past and why Xbox is likely to keep Bethesda games exclusive in the future. Let's get into it. What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It is your boy, MM2K, back again with another episode of The Medicine. Do me a huge favor before we get into this one, y'all. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please. So you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all y'all straight up. Y'all know the deal. Y'all know the reason. And y'all know the slogan. I am not too proud to ask. And speaking of not too proud to ask, I want to thank you guys so much for the support on the PNTS Patreon. Y'all love the lyrics to go. We're going to keep cranking them out. And if you want to look at further ways to support the platform, look below in the description. We got all the ways you can do that. All right, now let's get into it. All right, so here's the deal, y'all. The purpose of this platform is not to cap for one particular pl piece of plastic of choice or another. It's to spread the truth where misinformation may have been given elsewhere. It's to be a counterbalance to the misinformation and the caveats that people do for their own agenda. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't like Xbox, you know what I mean? Even with the acquisition of Bethesda, I gotta see what's coming out now, you know what I mean? Um, I said on a previous episode of Scram Punks that I, I, didn't, I wasn't the biggest fan of Bethesda's offerings this year opposite of Wolfenstein. I did like Fallout 76, but I gave that a seven and a half. Wasn't my favorite Fallout. And I gotta see what these new offerings present. Therefore, they lost my title. They lost the title for my favorite um, uh, um, favorite uh, developer or publisher. That honor now goes to Ubisoft. That being said, the acquisition of Bethesda across the board opposite of me was humongous, was huge. But I was under the, the belief that they paid 7.5 billion for Zenimax Online, the parent company, and they didn't just buy out the studios because there was more to the deal than just keeping the IPs exclusive that would be lucrative to them. Particularly the Orion Tech and um, you know the VR tech that they, that they got you know at their disposal, and the fact that. Bethesda, despite it having low returns on some of its most recent games, they're a very competent studio. You know what I'm saying? Even when they're not doing super fantastic on their games, they are innovating with tech, and they still seem to be a lot more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They seem to be a lot more uh, well together and a lot more capable than Microsoft's internal workings right now. So it could be some cross-pollination where they help the Microsoft internal teams prior to this acquisition, you know, get more on the ball. You know what I'm saying? They seem a lot more competent is the word that I was looking for. Now, in that equation, I said there's no way that they're going to leave everything in Game Pass and not make it accessible even on a PlayStation 5. They're leaving money on the table if they do that. And they would be leaving substantial money on the table. And I'm here to let y'all know that, who was that? Jim and Tammy Faye Baker, or who was that that said that? I have sinned back in the 80s. I have sinned. I made that comment without doing what I've been doing best, crunching those numbers. What I do for a living, crunching those numbers. For the last 25 plus years, I crunching those numbers. I didn't crunch the numbers. Now after crunching the numbers, I gotta act quick. <laughs> I gotta take that all back. Uh, yeah, y'all. Yeah, it, it ain't. It, 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 look, Bethesda, these Bethesda games at some point in time, as soon as they're ready, they're gonna be exclusive. There might be a couple of exceptions. Um, and I'm about to show you why. Let, let, let me show you something. All right, let's go to the calculator, y'all. Let's just crunch the math, man. Let's do the, let's just crunch the math. All right, so on the PlayStation platform, uh, the biggest games like Elder Scrolls and um, what do you call it? Elder Scrolls and, and, and the Fallouts, when they're well perceived, they alone on the PlayStation platform can hit 10 million. And I was looking at that and I said, that's why they're not gonna leave. They're gonna keep it multi -plat. But here's the thing. The Bethesda, if you, if you are not a Bethesda fanboy like me, 
you don't understand that the Bethesda culture is rabid. And that's why Phil did say on a case by case basis. And even though I don't trust Phil's words generally, now it's starting to sink in what he means behind the scenes on that. Where I, I, I might be inclined to say there is a little wiggle room where you might see a game here, a game there go, depending upon the reception. But in all likelihood, even at the current tracks of Game Pass, you're, the, these games is likely going to be, for the most part, they're going to be exclusive. All right, so here's why I say this. On the PlayStation platform, when the Bethesda title does well, it can get 10 million plus, right? But we'll stick with 10 million, just, just to keep it keep the numbers fathomable and crunchable, right? So let's just say, if everybody knows that the next Elder Scrolls, which again, the fan base for the Elder Scrolls is rabid, no matter where they are. If they know that Elder Scrolls is only going to be accessible via Game Pass, I am going to say, we're going to do two sets of numbers. I'm going to say that they're going to have a 70% crossover rate, meaning that 70% of that 10 million that bought it on PlayStation, they're going to say, oh, you know what? I got to get it on Xbox. Whether that be playing it on PC via Xbox, whether that be playing it via xCloud, because I would, I would surmise that xCloud would be ready by then and they could play X Cloud, you know, maybe on a tablet or something like that, or whether just getting an Xbox all together. They're gonna do what they need to do to play this on Game Pass. They're not just gonna leave it alone. They're not just gonna say, well, I ain't gonna get it. All right. I'm gonna say 70% will do that. So then that's seven million people out of ten that's going to go and find their way that prop that may have primarily just gamed on PlayStation, but may say, you know what? I got to get a hold of Elder Scrolls. This is just too dope for me not to experience, right? That leaves 30 million. I mean, not 30 million, 3 million. That's just like, you know what? I'm not jumping through no hoops to try to access this. I'm going to stay on PlayStation and I just won't have the, ex I just won't enjoy the experience. All right. 7 million versus 3 million. So let's crunch the numbers y'all. Okay. So if you take 7 million, right? And you multiply that times 15 for Game Pass. You get 105 million. But you got to remember that the Bethesda games are lengthy, long. And if people went out of their way, particularly to buy a console for Game Pass, they're going to stay locked into Game Pass. So we're going to say that's 7 million is going to stay locked in the game pass for a year all right because these are the people that love bethesda they love bethesda games bethesda games or games as a service normally even though they have single player player elements they have mods all types of stuff that you can do with the games you know all that support is going to come these people are going to be more than happy to know that they can get the whole bethesda catalog in a service for 15 dollars a month so if you take the 15 dollars a month times the 7 million people and you multiply that 105 million by 12 the annual subscription rate you get 1.26 billion that's 1.26 billion dollars that Microsoft is going to make likely by the people crossing over from PlayStation to access Bethesda games on Game Pass. All right. Let me just put that here for my notes. All right. Now, that three million that's stubborn, that's like, hell no, we won't go. Let's let's multiply it then. We're gonna take three million. Now we know that games on PlayStation 5 are gonna be $70. And we're we'll, gonna well, no, no, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this first. We know that games on PlayStation 5 is going to be $70. We know that 30% of whatever sold is going to go to PlayStation, right? And we know it's a little bit more complicated than that as far as, you know, how much money they're going to get. Oh, whoa, 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 I did the wrong calculation. Okay, we need to take 70 and we need to times it times 0.30. So that's $21 out of $70. 
$70 that is gonna to go to PlayStation. Now we know Microsoft is gonna get less, you know, because of taxes and other things like that, even on digital copies, but we ain't gonna go there. We ain't gonna do all that stuff. We're just gonna say, let's just pretend that they're gonna get the full $49. So we're gonna take the 49 that they're gonna get after Sony takes its, its cut of 30% and we're gonna multiply that times 3 million. That's 147 million. <laughs> that doesn't even scratch the surface of 1.26 billion. I'm not saying 147 million ain't a substantial amount of money, but that's only a one-time charge that they're gonna get, the 147 million. So they're giving up 147 million to potentially gain 1.26 billion by forcing people to go to gay pads, okay? So I'm gonna put that down here for my notes. 1.47 million, and, and look, it don't jive. It don't jive, okay? The 1.26 billion by forcing people is a lot greater than um, 147 million. You know what I'm saying? That they're gonna lose by forcing people if that 30% non-retention rate happens. And that's likely what's gonna happen. But let's just say that I'm wrong. Let's just, let's even do it in the reverse. Let's just say by leaving it in Game Pass, the PlayStation Nation is faithful. They say, oh, hell no, we won't go. And let's just say it's the flip side. Let's just say instead of 3 million going, staying on PlayStation, only 3 million go to Game Pass. Let's crunch the numbers. So let's do it again. Let's do 3 million times the price of Game Pass, which is $15 times 12 you get 540 million let me just write that down for my notes now let's take a look and see how much they stand to gain by not by 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 you know leaving out that 7 million let's do it again we know that they're going to get 49 dollars per each one at the most we're going to times that by 7 million. That's 343 million. They still gain to get more. They still gain to get more, more than 50% by just saying, you know what? Even if the majority of people plan to stay on PlayStation, we're still forcing you to go to Game Pass. Only if we get a 30% crossover rate, they still get more money. Now you're saying, well, MM2K, that's 243 million that they're leaving on the table. They can then look at their financials if the crossover rate is that low and then make adjustments and say, you know what? All right, now, six months later, we're going to uh, have you go to, uh, well, six months later, we'll give you the game on your platform, PlayStation. So, yeah, if you look at these numbers, man. <laughs> and look, like I said, I'm not completely sold on Microsoft because of this deal. I gotta see the quality of the games that Bethesda get, even though I know this is a big deal globally. I personally got, so this ain't, I gotta see the games, I gotta see the quality. So this ain't coming from somebody that likes to cap for Microsoft. And originally, 24 hours before I'm making this video, I said there's no way they don't keep the big games multiplied. But here's where I gotta push back on the people that do agree that they're gonna be exclusive, but they agree for the wrong reasons. They said Microsoft don't care about money, don't care. Shut up! They're a Fortune 500 company. Even if they take an initial loss on their investment, they got to show a rate of return and they got to show it at some point in time to the investors. And because of that, and because of the nature of the market where you're always battling yourself, they always care about money. It just happens to be that the money is on the side of them keeping this exclusive. So for those of you that are making the right outcome argument, but you're making it for all the wrong stupid reasons, please stop. It doesn't make any sense. 
everybody cares about money, even when they're making an initial investment, because at some point in time, they got to go to analysts. They got to go to the people on the market and they got to say, this is when we're, we're going to expect a rate of return that makes our investment substantial. Hence, Disney saying up until X, Y, Z, we're going to lose a billion dollars. But after that time frame, you're going to see increases at da, 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 da. The same applies here. So even at a poor crossover rate of 30 percent from PlayStation in the example that I provided, they still are making more money forcing people to go to Game Pass. And I just, and I, I couldn't put the numbers together in my head to, to understand that and fathom that. I just assumed, and I was wrong for assuming. But again, we don't cap here. We, we, we're here to, to, to bring truth to light. Um, and now that everybody is aware of why these numbers are going to be the way that they are you know what i'm saying even with the great transfer rate or the poor transfer rate why they are what they are now hopefully i've done a better job of explaining why they're going to be exclusive than these non-business minded counterparts out here again the outcome i agree on with them but they are so wrong because they can't get out of fanboy land sachi and adela don't care about ooh. I don't want to make sure it's not available on this box. No, it's all about the money. And fortunately, the money makes sense keeping this exclu exclusive. And I think for the most part, unless you see super poor yields from the from the crossover rates, where you see it's like a 10% transfer rate and 90% still stay on PlayStation, which I heavily doubt, then you would see them, you know, make this stuff multi-plat. But unless you see those poor yields and poor transfer rates, this is going to be, a lot of this stuff is going to be exclusive. And I believe that's why you saw the PlayStation logo removed from Starfield. You know, I don't I don't think that it's going to, it's going to become multi-plat or if it's, go, it's going to release day and date multi-plat. I could be wrong, but the financial speak to it being exclusive. And that's it from your boy MM2K. Let me know what you think about what I have to say in the comment section below. Because like I always say, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I have to say, check out the links below to follow me. Those links will lead you to the Broadband Bullies, PNTS Network, Hard Knock Digital Culture, and yes, the Stadia Dosage. And again, if you did like the material, do us a huge favor. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications. And if you want to look at further ways to support the channel, look in the description. It shows you how many ways to do so. And with all that said, you have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.